we do a poor job with uh, dealing with dangers that aren't obvious and immediate. I suppose all one can say is this is a matter of education. As a society, we are unlikely to take action against an issue that is not posing any immediate danger. And for centuries, we have been exploiting our environmental resources and ignoring the signs that our actions result in negative consequences. Ecologist Garrett Hardin's theory of the tragedy of the commons can help explain the mass exploitation of our environmental resources. Much like Hardin's analogy of cattle in a common field, the world's oceans are an example of a global commons. There are internationally respected maritime boundaries that extend 200 nautical miles out from shore, but anything past that is considered high seas and is governed by no country. These maritime boundaries only extend to cover a small portion of the ocean, and everything else is highly vulnerable to exploitation. This lack of jurisdiction allows the oceans to be exploited by countries and corporations seeking to extract maximum personal gain from this common area, which leads to overfishing, oil spills, and extreme pollution. Much like the ocean, our planet's atmosphere acts as a global commons. However, unlike the oceans, which are controlled by international laws to an extent, the only aspect of the sky controlled by the international governments are aviation laws. So the only part of the atmosphere that's regulated are the physical objects flying around in them. No attention is paid to the invisible particles that are going to cause a lot more damage in the long run. The lack of regulation on emissions released into the atmosphere makes it not only a regional commons, but a global commons, since wind circulates the air over the entire surface of the planet, so what happens in China will eventually affect the United States as well. The invisible emissions re released from factories, big cities, and resource extraction and energy production are legally no one's responsibility. So, following Hardin's theory, every individual acts to ensure maximum personal gain without regard to the carrying capacity of the commons. For example, coal power plants release massive amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere every year, but they disregard this and instead focus on how cheap this form of energy is to the public. And hydraulic fracturing supposedly releases methane, one of the most potent greenhouse gases, into the air at every drilling site. Other large sources of emissions are transportation and large-scale agriculture. If the organizations in charge of regulating emissions do not make a stronger stand soon, the public will continue to act for individual gain until the common reaches its capacity and collapses. This will happen in the form of exponential global warming trends. We have taken the first step in recognizing that this global warming trend we are observing is man-made and is the result of an enhanced greenhouse effect due to our uncapped emissions of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, such as CO2, methane, and chlorofluorocarbons. The Paris Climate Change Conference was the first of many steps for countries to step up and pledge to enact regulations and incentives to reduce their overall emissions. Other solutions have been proposed, but the most important first step is to recognize the atmosphere as a global commons and take steps to preserve it through regulations or the cycle will continue and it will be ruined.